stocks. Selling off sharply today, the Dow dropping 486 points and taking out its June lows. Joining me now to break down the action, Keith Lerner from Truist, Alicia Levine from BNY Mellon Wealth Management. It's good to see you both. Alicia, to you first. Where do we go from here? What do you think? Well, great to see you, Scott, on another turbulent Friday. Look, we have been in print with our clients for months now that our, our downward, you know, our downward range was at 3,600. So we've we've well prepared our clients for what we thought the downside could be in this market if inflation did not resolve on its own and if the, if the Fed had to come in and really go higher for longer. I, I think it's no stretch of the imagination to say that we could likely undercut that here simply because markets don't stop exactly where you think they are. And the momentum here is clearly to the downside. But but I'd say this, uh, to the extent that um, we are seeing evidence of inflation cooling in other parts of the economy, I think at some point we could have a relatively better end of the year than we have the end of the third quarter. And I would just say that the fourth quarter is seasonally very strong, particularly in a midterm election year. So in the short term, likely we go lower. Not, not too hard to say that, but I do think we, we do have a better fourth quarter. So, Keith, aside from ranting, I think we can we went on a rant, Jeremy Siegel did today, that the Fed's doing too much, right? That was, that was plain. That, that was his point of view. The other side of it, of course, is as long as they're doing that, as, as long as they're so resolute to stay on the path they're talking about being on now, stocks are going to continue to go lower. Do you agree? Listen, um, well, first, for, for, great to be with you and Alicia. Um, I'm kind of in the same camp with Alicia. You know, we, we were with you in August, and our, uh, you know, our view back then was to reduce equities as we were approaching 42 to 4,300. But our message today, and we just, we just wrote this uh, today, Scott, is that we don't think it's time to press a negative view after a 15% decline in just five weeks. I mean, it, today felt a little bit panicky. Um, we're seeing, uh, you know, one of the more oversold conditions similar to June. So we can certainly overshoot that. But I think uh, at this point, a lot of the damage has been done, at least short term. And, um, you know, I think we will get a rebound. I will say, you know, as we look at six to 12 months, we still think we have a very challenging backdrop because I do agree with uh, Siegel insofar as I think the Fed has scar tissue. And what that means is not only will they keep rates higher for longer, is they likely to be less aggressive when they do pivot. And this is going to affect the market cycles and economic cycles for many years to come, in our view, because they're not going to be on call like they've been for the past uh, several years. But again, more direct to your question, Scott, we just down, went down 15 percent in a straight line. We don't think this is time to press the bets on the negative side. Oh, I hear you. I mean, it's hard to be. It can't really get negative now. If you're just getting negative now, you haven't been paying attention because there's been all sorts of reasons leading up to today why you may want to be negative. Most certainly don't fight the Fed. Right, Alicia. Now, that sounds great. That doesn't really help anybody, though, sitting at home who's wondering, should I perhaps buy stocks now? What if I listen to Keith? I'm not inclined to get uber negative today, but should I start to get incrementally positive? So I think to the extent that there's fear and loathing in the market, that sentiment is rock bottom close to where it was during the global financial crisis. I think it's not actually a bad plan to start edging in. I'd say this. I do think that we have a ways we, we do have a couple of weeks here where we could go lower simply because it's, it's not done yet. There's the valuations have to come in. Earnings are going to start to crack a little bit, but it is too late to get negative from here. So we've already uh, diversified our clients with alternatives, short term fixed income. We pulled out of emerging markets and Europe to an extent earlier this year. So, you know, we've we've already taken some risk off the table. And what we're looking for is a better entry point. So the question is, Alicia, what is the better entry point? And for us, this is about earnings and this is about what's realistic. And to the extent that we see earnings come down, we would be willing to buy here because, Scott, you know this, that the market stabilizes well before the real economy and well before the data do. So the yeah. Fed's in a tough space because they're, they're stuck with having to make economic projections with backward-looking data. So to go back to Jeremy Siegel for a second, 
it, it, that's the, the 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 crux of the matter and the bind that they're in. It's not that they're making two mistakes. It's that this once they made the first mistake, they were stuck with this.